Let's begin making that infinitely easier to answer at any point in your life. Let's make sure that you always have an epic answer to that. Why? Because your story and being able to share it effectively matters more than ever before. Because right now, story wins. Story trumps benefits. Story trumps bio. Story trumps uh, somebody else's story if yours is better told. Uh, I, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I've been working, helping people tell their stories for the past five years, unexpectedly so in my life. I'll reference why I know a shit ton about story from the last 25 years of my life. But most of all, what I'm going to try and do in a very short amount of time, I'm going to cram 45 minutes into 20. And you're going to take away, hopefully, a drive and determination to get your story right and to know where to look for your story, how to find it, the best one, and how to shape it up. Like, so that you can make a quantum leap forward on your branding, your bonding, and your marketing. How's that sound? OK, check this out, this slide right here. What do all of these people have in common? Blake. They have a definitive great story. Give it up for Blake. That's exactly right. If I said, hey, that guy in the top left-hand corner, what's his definitive story? No, it's the time he was in a car wreck and he almost died in the Dominican Republic and he got a second chance at life and he said, I'm not screwing it up. I'm taking massive advantage. I got a golden ticket. I was sitting with him in the lobby out there the other day because I was on the way out of this other session. I ran into him. We sat down. We talked for three hours because we go about 12 years back. And I was telling him I'm doing origin story work nowadays. And he goes, oh my god. He said, my origin story. He said, you got to go to Facebook. Go to my Facebook page. He said, it's the single most popular post I ever put up, that story about me. Uh, when I almost died in a car wreck in the Dominican Republic. But every single one of them, yes. Uh, does, has anybody ever heard Gary, v, Gary V's story about how he sort of got? Raise your hand if you have. Right? The wine library. Come on, raise your hand if you've heard of Gary and wine library. Because he tells it over and over. It's definitive to his brand. Did anybody know that Oprah came out of an abusive childhood? Raise your hand if you knew that. Because it's her definitive origin story. They all have epic origin stories. And what does that do for them? It helps us know, like, and trust them, and feel like we understand them, and that they're a freaking human being. Okay. The, one of the top things I want you to take away from today is that your bio sucks for bonding people with you. Your bio sucks for bonding people to you. As a matter of fact, there is probably no more effective tool in the world for giving people a feeling of separation from you than your epic bio. Do you know the last thing a speaker wants when they're walking on the stage? If you've done speaking a lot, which I've done for 25 years, you don't want somebody to come up and read all your accomplishments in a list because it dehumanizes you and the audience is against you before you even start talking. What would be the greatest introduction you could ever get? Somebody tells just a little tiny story about you as a human being and then mentions one good thing that you've done in your career. And now the audience is with you before you've stepped on the stage. But how about the audience is with you the minute they've read about you on the page? That's what I'm talking about here. What I've been doing is helping fix people's entrepreneurs' brands in the past five years because all they've got is a bio. And when you study the psychology of influence, the two most important things are that you must have credibility with your audience, and you must have likability and trust. Which one of those two is the most important factor for people purchasing with you? Which, one's come, which one has to be satisfied first? Likeability and trust has to be satisfied first. But what are you doing right now? Probably leading with your credibility only. So what happens, how do people feel differently about you when you lead with your humanity, your likability, your relatability, and then you back that shit up 
with your credibility. And I think you probably have a giant head start on your credibility. And I think that if we audited you, most of you in the room would get a big fat F on your likability and trust as it is represented in the, in the world there of uh, media. So would you like to learn more? Say aye. aye. OK. This is yours. Uh, it's tons of pages. It tells you exactly how to find and craft your own compelling uh, origin story. So if I didn't say another word, I got you fully covered. That's my cell phone number. Hit me with a text. I'll hit you back with that, with that guide, OK? So I'm going to give you a short course in that guide right here. Howard Schultz, his origin story. If you haven't heard it, um, he, he, tells, he uses it to great effect. He tells it thousands of times. On a cold January day in 1961, my father, a diaper delivery serviceman, fell on a sheet of ice and broke his hip and his ankle. I was seven years old, and I vividly remember the accident, the image of my father slumped uh, on the family couch, his leg in a cast, unable to work or earn money, ground down by the world, still burned into my mind. At the time, we were living in a housing project in Brooklyn, no health insurance, no workers' comp, no severance, no way to make ends meet. I vowed if I was ever in a position to take care of people, I would strive to make a difference in your life. Now imagine that Howard Schultz, that's a freaking great origin story. We're going to learn by the time the 20 minutes is up how much is packed into that 45 seconds. Okay? Now imagine that you're at a table, people are going around introducing themselves in a business situation, Michael, and Howard says that, and you got to go next. Would you be ready to say that much in 60 seconds about yourself? as a likable, credible human being with a big why? Would you be ready, yes or no? Let's get you ready, OK? Howard Schultz, Gary V, dad dragged me into a liquor store when I was 14. I hate it, two bucks an hour. I realize people collect wine the way they collect baseball cards at 16. Fall in love with it, join the family business at 22, really start driving operations, launch winelibrary.com in 1996, very early second e-commerce wine business, and in a very short period, grew up from a four to $45 million business, kept innovating, started a wine show on YouTube in 2006, called it Wine Library. It was me, thank you. It was sitting in front of a table like this, drinking four bottles of wine for about 25 minutes at a time, and hundreds of thousands of people watched it. How much did he convey about himself, his origins, his values, and his value in 45 seconds? Brian, are you ready to do that? We got to get you ready, all right? Uh, Eckhart Tolle, my man, Eckhart Tolle. Any Eckhart Tolle fans in the house? Okay, Eckhart Tolle has an origin story. Uh, number one spiritual teacher in the world, ranked by Time Magazine, if you, if you weren't aware of that. Um, that's why he made this slide here. I was severely depressed. I couldn't live with myself any longer. And in this, a question arose without an answer. Who is the I that I cannot, that cannot live with the self? What is the self? I felt drawn into a void. The next morning I woke up and everything was so peaceful. The peace was there because there was no self, just a sense of presence or beingness just observing and watching for the next two years. I did very little. I slept on park benches. I was continually at peace. That peace has never left me. So if you enter Eckhart Tolle's world, you know that story really soon because it tells you so much about the person. What we're talking about here is your humanity being represented in a well-crafted story. Does that make sense? OK, excellent. Here's three things I want you to know from coaching 100 entrepreneurs in the last couple years on their telling their origin story. The number one thing is you're wrong. You do have an epic origin story. If you were thinking, I don't have a great story, you're wrong. Because most people that pass through my doors go, I don't have a great one. And I want you to know, you don't just have one. When you get, when you get expert at looking for your stories, you have a backyard full of epic stories that you haven't found and begun telling yet. And they're going to, they're going to help you uh, in your business a ton when you find them. So you do have one. Number two, a guy sat at a table out there with me the last event, and he goes, uh, what if you're afraid of telling your story? I said, that's a healthy fear. Because the chances are the reason why you're afraid to tell your story is because something inside you is protective. And it says, but if I tell my story, I'm going to suck at it. And that's right, Elizabeth. 
Because if you're not ready, if you haven't crafted it, if you haven't chosen the right story, we all know the experience of being the person at a social gathering who begins to try to tell their story, and you instantly recognize, I'm boring the shit out of people. This story is not getting laughs where I hoped it would get laughs. I'm talking too long, and I wish I could stop. Right? Have you ever felt that? That's protective fear. But the second point is, look, if you're telling it now and, you're, and it doesn't feel good, it's because you're telling it poorly. Stories, I forgot this. Most of my clients report to me that the number one thing that surprises them is that story has as many reliable rules and techniques as marketing. It's the same thing. It's not a mysterious, uh, artistic, intuitive endeavor. It's hard, fast rules that shape up your story. With a little bit of investment of your time, you can figure out the most important of those hard, fast rules and tell your story better. And then instead of being afraid of telling it, you'll tell it well. All right, number three, you can tell it great with a little bit of work, all right? Okay, so here are the top six qualities of your origin story. You don't have to write them down. Take a photo or grab the PDF that I put up there, okay? But look, it humanizes you. It is emotional. It has drama in it. Drama means an obstacle of some sort. It reveals your why. It contains wisdom. And for the love of God, it's short. Three minutes was the, long, the longest time frame I want you to be telling your origin story for. Here's my greatest experience as a coach. Someone gets on that first call with me. We fish around. I say, tell me your story. They do. I set a timer, my friend, and I listen to their story, 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 and then they're done, and I go, well, that was 16 minutes. We need to shorten that. Michael, hours, right? Hours, OK? If I asked you to tell me your story right now, how long would it take you? How many years would you be covering? Please don't do that, all right? OK, so um, yeah, it's short. Those are the top six qualities. Now, uh, if you were, you know, uh, grab my slide deck later and notice Eckhart Tolle, uh, Howard Schultz, Gary Vee, almost all six of those are in present in all of their 45-minute stories. OK, let's look at stories uh, that I've helped uh, entrepreneurs find. Dan Hogan, the one event that changed my life and my mindset. I'm going to show you proof at the end of the story how viral this went in his business when he finally got it right. OK. Uh, October 2013, I'm working at a job I hate, construction. Five years before, during the recession, my business as a personal trainer had failed. Right? Deep down, I feel helpless to change my life. God, you, my favorite thing about story is we can, dis I do this with my clients, we dissect the story at the end of the process, one line, perhaps one word at a time, so that you can understand how much is packed into that first freaking sentence. There's so much humanity in that first sentence. There's drama in that first sentence. There's conflict in the first sentence. He is vulnerable. He has an obstacle. He's in trouble. He's a human being. It's placed in time. Okay, all right. So it's Thursday, and I go to my friend Coach's house. I call him Coach because he's my football coach, but more so, he's my mentor. He's my father figure and my best friend. His truck is out front, the shades are drawn, but he doesn't answer. Something doesn't seem right, so I break down the door. I find Coach lying in bed under the covers. He is dead. Five days later, before he had drawn my kid and I into a big hug and said, We're family now. Coach's death sends me into a deep depression. The next 60 days are the worst of my life. I lose my job shortly after. My fiance and I split. I move back in with my mom. I gain 30 pounds and my truck is totaled in a collision. To top it all off, I rack up $40,000 in credit card debt trying to buy back my happiness. We worked for half an hour to find the line, to find, because he, 
All he ever wanted to express was, oh, and I went $40,000 in credit card debt. So a great story advisor digs and digs and digs and says, why, why, Craig? Why did you go into credit card debt? What's the truth? What's the truth? Buying stuff. Why? What's the truth? I was trying to buy back my fucking happiness. Then put that in your story. You want to improve your story? Tell more truth. OK, so I feel lost and alone. I don't care if I live or die. But worst of all, I have no clue how to even begin regaining my control over my mindset and motivation. The two most important words to his business. But then one day, I get a call from a friend, Ryan, who knows someone who's looking to work with a fitness coach. I haven't had a client for years, but the call feels like a lifeline. So while my head is saying I can't, the voice in my heart says, go for it, and I do. Best decision I ever made. What did, what did he do there? He just represented his client, his prospect's own uh, mental scripts. That very day, I started running again. A few days later, I was coaching my new client. When I stopped coaching five years before, I lost my reason for being. Getting back to it reconnected me with the most purposeful work I've ever found in my life. My why? I discovered I'm here to coach others to live as their best self. P.S., that first client that Ryan referred me to, it turned out to be Ryan. It was his way of helping pull me out of the dark. Clap if you like that story. <laughs> he likes the results. 39 shares when most of it, go to his webpage, 39 shares, the most shares he's ever gotten from a single post. Uh, uh, 67 comments, the most comments he's gotten. Uh, normally he averages about five. See, a well-told story is shared. People share stories in life. Okay, remember the top six qualities. That humanized him, that was emotional, that was dramatic, it revealed his why, it contained wisdom, and it was short. Okay, let's do another one. Meet Michael Pere Perella. Michael, will you, will you just raise your hand there? Uh, with his permission, I'm gonna walk you through Michael's story. About a decade ago, uh, at this destitute point in my life, because my business was completely failing, I started doodling my tombstone and wondering what would be said at my funeral. Read my story. On a yellow pad, I write out how I imagine someone might eulogize me. I'm writing all this glowing stuff, but then I have this honest moment. What I'm writing about myself is bullshit. It's fantasy. You want your story to be better? Tell the truth. Be a human being. So I write an honest eulogy, inclusive of my failures. I was 42, completely broke, cashing in the change at the Coinstar machine just to be able to feed my pets. And although I've never been a bad person or wished ill on anyone, there were two or three personal things I had real regret about. Humanity. A few people out there who felt like they got the short end of the stick from me because back then, I was a little too concerned with covering my own ass. I watched a tear hit the yellow pad and disrupt the ink. Alone and by myself in that dark moment, I realized I had the opportunity to become the architect of a new life for myself. I started to redeem myself. First, I fixed everything I thought was wrong about how I did business, and then I began improving my relationships, how I did those. That was the day I turn my life around. I'm very driven to, to every business. I'm very driven to 10x every business I'm involved in and to keep seizing bigger opportunities. I enjoy what money does for my family, but my deepest internal driver is my desire to provide a legacy after my death that benefits my children and theirs. Maybe someday they can say, my grandfather started this family fortune. Give it up if you like Michael's story. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something personal. I told this to Michael when I opened up the call. Raise your hand if this is true. If this is true, Michael. When I opened up the call with you, our coaching call, I said, Michael, I don't know you. I Googled around to figure out who was my next co coaching client was gonna be, and I gotta admit, the only thing I could find on Facebook about you made me feel like you might be an ego, just, just live totally entirely in ego. I said, uh, I said I'm, I'm anxious to discover the real person on the phone. And I'm telling my honest experience. 
I mean, I'd love to have this guy as a friend for life. We stayed on the phone for three to four hours with how much we just had to bond about human things. Not success things, human things. Family, love, mistakes. But now his story can show off the real him. Wouldn't you like to really be seen for the whole person, not the person people want to put you in a box for? That's what we're talking about here. Thank you, Michael, for giving me permission to share my experience with uh, the honor of coaching you. Okay, running down to time here. We got six minutes. We're right on schedule. Are you liking this? Are you learning from this more importantly? Okay, good. All right. So let's learn again. I'm beating this in to you as your coach. You're looking for, you're looking for the story that contains the, uh, as many of the five elements as you can. Which story in your life humanizes you, is emotional, has an obstacle, reveals your why, that contain wisdom, uh, a, a great storyteller can help you make sure that you surface the wisdom in that story. A as a fun fact, it's the wisdom in a story that makes it universal. The, that's how masterful storytelling takes your personal story and turns it into heroic mythology that people want to share, okay? Because it has a pearl of wisdom that tells everybody, oh yes, that's right, that's how to live life well. Okay, so um, Roland Frazier. Uh, Roland also gave me permission to share his story here. It was an absolute thrill to discover Roland's story. Again, I sat down with Roland. Uh, I didn't know anything about Roland. Uh, we interviewed over, over a tequila, which we both like. And I just heard the man's story. And this is how, what I learned that day. At 16 years old, I was already living on my own. Because my parents were divorced, I was very independently minded. I lived in my hometown of Covington, Virginia. Hey, storytelling technique. Uh, it might be in the PDF, but it's not up on the slide, so write it down. Set your story in time and place. Don't tell stories about years of your life. Look to tell a story about a moment in your life that might require some backstory. Every week, I was in clubs and bars till 3 a.m. because I was a keyboard player in a band. If I stepped out of the club for fresh air, I always had to explain my way back in. During the day, I had a job at Skate World. You feel the humanity? You feel the relatability? Can anybody relate to any of those details as a human being from your own childhood? Raise your hand. So that's what a story does. It says, oh, this guy's like me. About this time, I discovered a set of tapes in the backseat of my dad's car called The Psychology of Winning. Anybody know those tapes? Have a personal relationship? Great, more humanity for us. And I thought they were totally amazing. The idea that you could set a goal and just make it happen. But because I was so young, I was up against a lack of experience. And everyone's saying, when you have experience, come back, and then we can work with you. The obstacle, right? So I got my real estate broker's license at 18. And then at 19, I had the idea to sell listings for developers, which gave me an abundant supply of homes to list. But I was still looking for a way to use where I was at to get to something even better. So I asked the developers how they raise money. They said through investors. I had $12,000 saved from Skate World. <laughs> I gave it to the developers as my first, I gave it all to the developers in my first investment. All of it. What do we learn about him in that moment? All in. He's an all in guy. He always has been. One year later, my ROI was $39,000. Talk about a confidence boost. Now we were there at the moment when a 19-year-old went all in and freaking killed it and began to shape the Roland Frazier we know now that has a freaking incredible bio. Today, most people see me as a guy that puts smart business deals together. But I don't think success in business is about being smart. All the things I'm passionate about, business, music, I played in bands up until 42, nature photography, and even puzzles are about being one thing, creative. Thinking back on my teenage self, playing music in clubs till late and doing real estate deals by day, I can now see I've always been the same person. 50% business, 50% creative. But creativity, that's what really drives me. What did the story just share with you? His why, his origin. 
his humanity. One of the first obstacles he had to overcome in his life. All right, I'm out of time. So those are the top six qualities of your, ep of your epic origin story. Uh, this is how to get the entire guide uh, so that you can, uh, you can really rock your story. And um, I'm going to end on that right there, OK? Thank you so much. OK. Phenomenal stuff. Uh, certainly areas we can all make improvement on. That was uh, absolutely riveting. Thank you again, Patrick. Uh, so we are going to take a quick five-minute break. Uh, please be back here promptly at 10.30, where we um, are going to have a treat in the form of uh, a fireside chat with the founder of a uh, phenomenal online platform, Teachable. So uh, be sure to be back here at 10.30 uh, with the founder of Teachable, and that's uh, Anchor um, Nagpal. So a quick five-minute break. See you back here at 10.30.